We head into the morning newscast with all the latest coming in on coronavirus as Iran's Vice President Masuma Iftikhar has now contracted coronavirus according to state media reports. The news comes days after the country's Deputy Health Minister tested positive for the deadly virus. So far, 26 Iranians have died due to coronavirus. That's the highest death toll outside China. And earlier, the health ministry confirmed 106 more cases of infection, raising the tally of infected persons to 245. Mm -hmm. Vice President mm -hmm. Iftikhar is better known globally for her role as a spokesperson for hostage takers who seized the U.S. Embassy in Tehran back in 1979. Among other prominent political leaders infected by the virus are Deputy Health Minister Iraj Harichi and Head of Parliament's National Security and Foreign Affairs Committee, Mushtaba Zulnur. Iran has been struggling to contain the spread of the virus within the country and beyond. The country has been the source of dozens of cases in neighboring countries, including Afghanistan, Bahrain, Iraq, Kuwait, Oman and Pakistan. For now, Iranian authorities have announced domestic travel restrictions for people with confirmed or suspected infections. Access to major pilgrimage sites are barred. Public places such as holy shrines are being disinfected with the weekly Friday press suspended. Iran has no plans to quarantine entire cities and towns. So far, infected persons are in individual quarantine wards. International health experts are not sure if Iran's healthcare system will be able to contain the outbreak. And World Health Organization has clarified that the problem could be with surveillance and detection. Listen in. This disease came unseen and undetected into Iran, so the, the extent of infection may be broader than what we may be seeing, as is the case in many epidemics when they start, is you only see the severe end of the spectrum, and then as you do more surveillance, you find more mild cases. Uh, again, uh, Iran has dealt with many emergencies in the past, and in fact, uh, Iran's history of earthquake and disaster response and emergency medical team shows there's a very high clinical capacity for managing severely ill patients in Iran. So I don't suspect this has anything to do with clinical care. I suspect this is more to do with surveillance and detection uh, of cases at this point. Um well, the U.S. sanctions on Iran does not apply to humanitarian goods, several medical equipment makers are finding it hard to import the necessary testing kits. The World Health Organization has been supplying diagnostic kits and protective gear for healthcare workers. A WHO team is also set to visit Iran this weekend to evaluate the situation and provide necessary support.